Talofa. The months of October and November this year marks exactly 110 years since a catastrophe of epic proportions hit New Zealand and then the Pacific Island nations of the region. The flu pandemic of 1918 is regarded as New Zealand's most devastating peacetime event of the time, with 9,000 deaths and 40% of the population infected. It followed on directly from the devastation of the First World War, so communities were already traumatised. And to make matters worse, people gathered in large crowds to celebrate Armistice Day, allowing the flu virus to spread quickly. During the second wave of the flu pandemic, the steamship SS Toluni left Auckland Harbour with a clean bill of health, quote unquote. And the captain, knowing it had sick people on board, historians say the clean bill of health was more intended to stop the spread of other infectious diseases, smallpox, cholera, and the plague being the big three. They didn't know anything about viruses. The majority of doctors then didn't recognize the flu as infectious. The Toluna ship traveled around the Pacific Islands in November 1918, mainly between New Zealand, Fiji, and the Western Polynesia, leaving the flu in its wake. In Fiji, somewhere between 5 and 7% of the population died. In Tonga, between 1,000 to 2,000 people died. Western Samoa, as it was known then, was the worst hit country in the world. Roughly a quarter of the local population, or about 8,500 people, died in eight weeks. Medical historian Ryan McLean says, and I quote, more than anything else, influenza normally kills infants and the very old. This particular variant of the 1918 exclusively or nearly exclusively killed 18 to 45 or 50 year olds, which were the people most active in society. So when I say that a quarter of the population of Samoa died, we're talking about more than half of the young adults dying in the space of eight weeks, he said. It actually broke the country for a period. 90% of the adults were simultaneously bedridden and were not able to do anything. A famine ensured because crops hadn't been planted with so many adults sick and bedridden. When the sick recovered, the majority of their leadership had died. Ryan McLean further says the traditional leadership, the church leadership, the teachers, the trading factors, these individuals, in many cases, they lost 60 to 70% of those people or more of those people to the flu, unquote. Most of those that died were adults, leaving many, many children without parents. The devastation of the flu pandemic had a crippling effect on Samoa's leadership in 1918. Cultural knowledge was lost with those who died. Many of the living were too young to memorize, protect, and maintain the oral record. It impacted on everything from the loss of genealogy, loss of family oral history, loss of indigenous knowledge on the environment, the oceans, the forests, and indigenous health and spiritual practices. These oral records were usually passed on to the next generation by word of mouth by memorization, songs, poetry, and oratory. The deaths of so many adults meant those oral histories died with them. The loss of leadership and families meant the loss of land boundaries, or the knowledge of those land boundaries, and the erosion of family relationships and extended family connections, which extends to this day and age. In 1962, a few short decades later, Samoa organized and remobilized the Mo movement that led Samoa to become the first colonized country in the Pacific to regain its independence, a significant moment in Samoan's history. This is one of many examples of our Pacific histories that demonstrate our collective dedication and perseverance in the face of adversity by our ancestors. We are a resilient people our history teaches us that we are a brave and fearless people, 
people of the vast Moana, we hold our own and can stand united to face whatever comes our way. I'm always in awe at our people's strength and resilience. After every cyclone, after every storm or king tide or tsunami, after Mother Nature releases her full destructive might, our Pacific peoples pick themselves up every time and start again. Today, in 2021, we are facing another global pandemic of epic proportion. Again, it has devastated our families in French Polynesia, Fiji, New Caledonia, Guam, and PNG in particular. In Aotearoa, the latest COVID-19 Delta variant outbreak has hit our Pacific communities hard. The recent outbreak has invaded our positive spirit. It has really tested our perseverance. Delta has challenged our resilience. The lockdown is forcing us to re-examine our faith and question our values and our resolve. But like the voyages of our past ancestors across the vast Pacific Ocean, we too will continue to paddle our canoe forward, adapting as we go and remaining resilient. We've come a long way since 1918 and the Spanish flu, but some things remain the same. We find strength from one another, strength in our families and our communities, and strength in our faith and values. In times of crisis, we come together, whether in person or now more commonly, virtually. In times of crisis, as we are experiencing today, your leadership is called upon, you and each of you. It is only in times of hardship or crisis that the real measure of strong and resilient leaders will emerge. Our families and our communities will need your leadership. In looking ahead and in order for our communities to reconnect with our families, our Pacifica Island nations and the rest of the world and return to the similar kinds of freedoms we enjoyed before the arrival of COVID-19, we must transition out of the lockdown level system we're currently using into a new framework of more movement and freedoms. However, in order to transition safely towards greater freedoms and movements in a permanent COVID-19 global environment, it is vital we vaccinate our entire Pacifica population and to do it as quickly as possible. So I want to make a plea, don't wait, get vaccinated. Getting vaccinated is the best way to protect yourself and your loved ones from COVID. The vaccine is safe and effective. It is in my mind, the last layer of protection against COVID-19. It will reduce the chances of you getting ill and sick. It will reduce the chances of you requiring hospital care or being isolated in a quarantine facility away from the rest of your family and friends. It has been proven to reduce the chances of you dying. Let's make sure the next generation survive and thrives. Kia kaha from Malosi. Be strong.